This video is going to make you a better short game player. Just from watching this video, I found the best short game player in Southern California. This guy is Bruce Doucette. He shot 58 twice. He played in two different PGA Tour tournaments so far, and he's in Q school right now trying to make it. But he's got this really simple and effective way of teaching you the short game that I think you're really gonna like. So here it is. That's got a lot of spin. Oh. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm here with BJ Doucette. Hey, BJ, how's hey, it going? Good to see you, Brent. I, I've uh, known BJ for a long time. He's known as like one of the best players here in Southern California. He's played a lot of tour events and all the way up through every single level from junior golf all the way to PGA Tour events. And he owns a bunch of course records. I'll put his resume here. It's crazy. Super good at short game. So I wanted to go to BJ that has been following. There's been kind of like this kind of new school of short game instruction that's coming out. Traditionally, we would go uh, feet to third base, face to first base, swing along the feet, give it kind of a glancing hit. And we would change lots of different clubs. Yep. But if you're looking at what guys are doing on tour, they're doing a few different things that are different. It's not as shallow anymore. It's, and it's more down. And it's more like hitting low shots with the 60, which is weird. Yep. At the Ryder Cup, so Rory McIlroy opened the face up on a 60, wide open, like 45 degrees open, hit it hard. It came out really low and put the brakes on right next to the hole. We're going to go through all of it today. You're going to want to see this. Give me just your general short game philosophy and like sell people on why they should get better at it. Yeah, yeah. so uh, the short game opens up a lot of stuff. So not only does it give you the ability to go after more pins because you know you can get up and down from short sided. That's one of my main reasons that my game got so much better. Um, also, it, it helps you save call. That's once in a while we're able to chip in. Um, the big thing for, for all of us, I think, is, is giving us confidence in every part of the game, right? If you're have 150 yards out, and you see this tight pin and you're nervous for hitting the green, how are you going to execute a good shot from 150, right? So you want to free yourself up from the tee box all the way through so that now you know you have all the tools to at least make par. Sometimes chip in and make a birdie. And, that's and in your game, you started making more birdies when you were had more confidence in your short game. 100%. And it wasn't really because you were chipping it closer. It was just because it freed you up out there. Freed me up out there. So okay. in college, I was probably one of the worst short game players around. I was, I think, my senior year top 50 in the nation at ball striking, but I was bottom of, like, I would miss a green and I'd make bogey or double. And then, so it just got me into really the deep search of why I was such a bad chipper and figuring out, was it too much forward shaft lean? Was it just low point control? Was it loft control? And I didn't know, I didn't know why. I spent hours and hours trying to figure it out. It just made me sit, set the clubs down for the first time after college. But once I had started getting better and really diving into it, it I look, my scores just lowered dramatically. And if there was one thing in that kind of uh, rebuild of your short game that helped you, what, do you remember yeah, what it was? Understanding like the order of sequence for me when it first happened, it was um, I was always really good at forward shot, getting the, the handle really forward. Um, the sequence of the forward ball swing, right, we would all say would be the hips, then the chest, then the handle, then the club head last. Right? Yeah. That would be a great forward swing sequence. Um, for chipping, once I started understanding that everything kind of needs to get back delivered to the middle where the club head kind of starts, matches the pelvis, the chest, the hands, I can pivot everything through. Then it started to change where I can control my low point better and not dig it. Well then, Joseph May Mayo came out this last week. And it's basically debunked a lot of the stuff that I thought, which has been getting me into a deep dive into what's really good. Okay, yeah, with the uh, spin loft spin and, and loft, actual yeah. physics of yeah, everything. Yeah. And so you think about like ping pong paddles and how do we create backspin and that's what these guys are understanding is more down we're going they can create some more spin yeah the first thing that we're going to do to chapterize this okay so if we're going like real basic so here like this one here so just the first thing just uh hit some for us and kind of walk us through like the basics of getting good at a very simple chip shot yeah so yeah. I, in in our term of a chip shot right this to me would be kind of a pitch okay you would agree with yeah, yeah sure Good players need to be really proficient from seven to 10 yards first. That's the number one spot. And then and then start to develop the longer one. So like if we're going to that, that ball? The number one thing that I see with amateurs is their first thing they do is they set up to a, a chip shot with their feet like they're gonna hit a seven iron or a driver. Okay. And, and maybe not the better player, but 
they'll set up to a chip shot like this. So what does that promote us to do? It promotes us to move our low point with our, our weight. Sway. Sway, right? So the, I always tell them, if I'm going to hit a 300-yard drive, would I stand like this or would I stand like this, right? I'd probably stand more like this. Definitely. If I hit a five-yard shot, should I stand like this or like this? So it probably should be a little bit closer. I always tell them we should have our heels kind of clicking like Dorothy or put a club head on okay. the feet. So we should be pretty narrow with our stance. A low point should shift just in front of the golf ball, and a lot of guys talk about like the sternum being their low point because that's where our arms are the longest. Our weight kind of just leans a little bit left. Nothing ever should kind of move back. We want to kind of get a little bit closer to the golf ball so the heels are a little bit up. We're going to try to maintain our triangle, as a lot of coaches would say. It should be just like a little shin high to shin high follow through. So it should be here. Your sternum, where your sternum is, kind of dictates where the low point is. So you're kind of setting the low point in front of the ball by, okay, because before a lot of people would be like, oh, wait on the left side, and you get almost this like reverse K with some exactly. some players. Exactly. That's but, not actually moving the low point. Our gut. Right? Yeah. Just because we understand that our arms are connected, right? I don't have the ability to move this thing across my chest because my arms are long when they're in front of my chest. So if I need to move my low point forward, I have to be having my sternum leaning. Okay. I don't have the luxury to have one hand on it, right? So the reality of it is if I move it left and I keep it left or not like before, my low point will be in front of the ball. We want to catch bear first, then ground after. That'd be our kind of basic little chip shot motion that I, I like. Do you uh, make your right hand a little weaker when you're chipping? You no, know, I- Is that something that happens naturally or? To me, I like my right hand in a full golf shot, just a little bit more on top. I feel like I control the face this way. So it, your right hand is a little more on top. On top. I've yeah. noticed, okay. Yeah, no, I Cause I was thinking, I don't think that would be his. No, yeah. yeah. So, so me, show me like your, your full swing grip. Full swing grip would be about here. Okay. Yeah, so. And then chipping grip. I've gone, I've gone to this, as I raise the handle, I might get it a little bit oh, Okay, weaker. I gotcha. Um, for me, I've noticed over the years, um, when I have this strong grip, I have a tendency to, to de-loft it even more. Mm -hmm. And for wedges, I, I'd struggle when I get the handle too far forward. Um, so I kind of implemented that over the last couple of years. I wasn't okay. as weak as I am now, but. So if somebody's trying to build like really good contact with these, before you even get into loft and distance, they're just trying to get into good contact. Yep. Where do you like them to start with uh, to be honest, uh, beyond I, setup? So after setup goes, I like to have people just start with one hand. You can't really cheat it. The club head itself is throwing. The body's working appropriately, but you're training how to let the club set and fall. And, and that's really how people will develop a little bit better low point control. People, they move their entire system so much better when it's just one hand on it. It enables people to kind of use their body because their, their bigger muscles aren't really able to control this Mm -hmm. club and throw this thing around once this club's kind of attached to their one arm it's just going around them more it's great yeah and you do something that i've always to told people to do there's a few things you know because i've interviewed maybe like 40 or 50 different golf coaches and there's a few things that are like almost like singularities and when i talk to short game coaches some guys are left arm only some guys are right arm only but almost every short game coach is having people do just one handed but what you do, when I was having people do that at Be Better Golf Schools or myself, I was noticing that the buttons on their shirt weren't moving at all until I got them to put this other hand over here. Absolutely. Now this triangle kind of moves. So you can talk about the, how, because I see a lot of people when they chip, the, these buttons don't move, kind of Iron's Man's light does not. Yeah, so. and that kind of goes back to the, the low point conversation, right? And it, I see it all the time with amateurs. Um, they want to try to pull this back. Well, what did I do? If I bring this back, I've lowered, moved my low point. So now I have to figure out a way to throw this thing back down. So yeah, your radius is different and the low point's different. Yeah. I'm trying to maintain this radius, be able to set the club. I mean, maybe not for this little short uh, shot, but why we connect this is that so that we can't do this. We only have the luxury to do that when we have it one armed, right? Because mm -hmm. if I had my left hand on it, it would force me to, to turn, turn yeah. my chest. So why I make, make sure people are doing it this way. This way, people can kind of get it across a little bit. And I like training both, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, I think the left hand would be a little bit lower shot um, or produce a little bit more low of a shot mm -hmm. um, than the right hand. But I'm a believer that if this is your dominant hand, then might as well tr keep training your dominant hand. Yeah, if somebody was going to pay me like $100,000 to get it into a bucket there, I, I would always use my right hand. Yeah. yeah, okay. I love that. And, once we start doing low point stuff uh, and, and seeing it with the two hands, 
you know, I've, I've been a subscriber to the long and wide. I've been kind of a long and throw. Yeah. I believe that as long as you have the utmost confidence, it doesn't really matter. If you can okay. control the face, get a, chem, a center strike, control your low point, picture your trajectory, then I don't care if you're long, wide, or a lot of set, okay. a lot of throw. It doesn't really matter to me. All right, so resetting, making really good contact. What's yeah, that? so uh, this is something that I think uh, now that I've developed a better technique and understanding what was going on, we've, got, we've been in a nice last three, five years of really good information, right? And so w when I identified why I was so bad, we were talking about low point control and forward shaffling. I think we're now finding that we don't have to be so fearful of the forward shaffling because of the way that the club needs to be delivered, right? So some guys would kind of have this like longer feel, but I'm not so afraid of setting this anymore because I've understood that the center of the mass of the club has to drop and the club head has to drop, but the handle itself doesn't go down. That's what we have to stay away from being fearful of. The handle starts to actually move up slightly so that that club doesn't dig. So we can have that forward shaffling without digging. Because I would think like if I'm really bad, if I was really bad at chipping, right? And sometimes I'm thin and mm -hmm. sometimes I'm fat. Yep. That would In be your mind, I would think like, okay, well, all I got to do is leave that sweet spot, the same distance from my center and just turn and turn. Yep. But I, I've noticed that that doesn't work. That's not enough. You sometimes will still hit behind the ball, right? Yeah, yeah. So, and that's so the angle of attack. There's a better way than just leaving the radius I, constant. I agree, and right? What is that? So it is, it is the whole making sure that we're leaning left and going left while this is swinging more down on it with a little bit of open face. You can play with it with your launch windows. I think the ball position still needs to be back. The set can happen. I don't think it needs to set a ton, but it does need to set a little bit. But as we're moving left, we're going to be unwinding the club head and the center of mass, letting this fall while the handle starts to move up just briefly. Like it's a, it's a small amount. Notice I didn't really take a divot there. Yeah, so you're saying <laughs> instead of just turn, turn, if we let the club head go down while the hands come up, then this coupling Yep. Makes this able yeah, to deliver. Better it. friction. Cons okay. Yeah, so it'll actually create a little bit more of a lower lofted spin. I mean, if you, but you, you have to make sure you're never leaning to your right side with the chest, ever okay. tilting to the right. So if it ever goes on the way through, it should always be kind of leaning that way. Okay. Yep. Like this Yeah, exactly. This way and never. This yeah, way. it doesn't necessarily have to rotate that way. You just want to try to feel like you are leaning over your left ankle with your sternum. That was it. That was really good. So you can see more about BJ. Follow him. I think the best place to connect with BJ is on Instagram. So his Instagram is listed right here. He's also teaching lessons in uh, a lot of different places in Orange County, mostly at No Bogies Golf yep, in right. Irvine, which is a really cool indoor place. And then he, he uh, because he did legendary things in some courses, he gets some uh, legendary access. <laughs> That's uh, really good. So connect with him and you'll see more from him on this channel. So be sure to subscribe. See you there. Bye. Thanks, Brandon. Way to go. A lot of fun.